I said we haven't done a video for some time. Uh, show them what you've been doing because we've had a few inquiries about this particular plane I've just infilled. Um, the reason I infilled it was there was absolutely no necessity to infill it. But I wanted to do it with boxwood because I adore boxwood and it's a very rare infill on mitre planes. I've only actually ever recollect seeing one old mitre plane. It was by Gabriel and it was fill, infilled with boxwood. Some man came down to a David Stanley sale from Scotland oh, 15 or more years ago and uh, he showed it to me and he could tell it was original with the age of the boxwood so it's a very rare infill and I like restoring planes um, this is the original infill which I've copied exactly by the way uh, a piece of uh, mahogany or well, put towel on it to remember what it's all about quite a lot of small worm in it that was the bed um, the front end fill was restorable I could just clean that up a bit but the wedge has seen better days and so I decided to do it I could have done it in rosewood but as I've already said I prefer boxwood um, and that's why um, I've done numerous planes in the past uh, most of them wanted new infills this one was alright but what I did notice on this one oh by the way towel nearly always has a very long front infill which actually is marginally in front of the mouth. I have seen them shorter but they're nearly always long and what I, I've never noticed before this bit here only because I took it out and discovered it it's got a, a nice little s slope there when it was in the plane it looked to be one continuous curve but it isn't it bumps over like that so I've copied that and you can feel it with your finger but you can't really notice it but it's a very nice feature I've never noticed before um, this was the original can sunk screw broken like that and it's got a loose collar most mitre planes of this period have cheese head screws which are virtually unobtainable. I've tried for 30 years to get these in England with no success. And this is the this is a brand new old one. Uh, I've even been to places where they've in Leicester where they've said we have sold screws for over a hundred years and they never produced a wood screw in this country with a cheese head. Well they did because I've seen them on a Nettleford's card displaying all their different screws but they're very rare anyway I was going to renew the screw but when I got it out um, it just wanted a clean up and it was exceptionally wide uh, shank three eighths of an inch with an enormous thread on it deep thread and before I took this screw out, because of the wide uh, nick in the head, I assumed it was a modern one. But when I got it out, it proved to be just the opposite. It's as old as the others, as old as this plane. An enormous uh, deep thread on it again. So I put that back. Well, that's about it. Um, I've just been trying to get it to perform a bit when Sarah came down this 
Sarah has just reminded me that I put a new line in it. This was the original line that I took out, but it's actually worn right down to soft metal. So it's no good, useless. So I've only got, as it happens, a French iron, because uh, uncut irons are hard to come by. So I've put this French one in, sharpened it up a bit. But I have actually it's got the French mark there, but on this side I've just put iron H sorbet roughly because that was the original one that was in it for future reference. Um, it's got a fairly fine mouth, well, very fine mouth, but I've seen them finer. I haven't got it in perfect working order, it's pretty good. Now this piece of boxwood, I'd already got messing about with it before Sarah came down. The grain runs like that, so you, whichever way you approach it, you're going against the grain to begin with, then going with it. But as you can see, a mitre plane, even in not perfect.